the, the this this thing happens. I want to take what's in the text box. I want to adjust the text box. So I say text box one dot text is equal to. Well, I don't want to delete the stuff that's there, right? I want to add on. So remember how to do that. We say text box one dot text is equal to text box one dot text plus, right? I. Okay. So let's think about what's going on here. We're saying four i is equal to zero to two fifty, which means that we're going to go through this. 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way up to 250. And each time, we're going to take the text box, we're going to take what's already in there, we're going to add i to it, okay? And then, then we're going to put that back in the text box where it came from. So let's see what happens when we run this. I'm going to press the button, and we get nothing. Okay, we're getting the, the classic error, conversion from string nothing to double is, is not valid, okay? And the reason why we're getting that error is because it's having some trouble comparing what's in the text box at the beginning, which is nothing, to the number i. Really what I want to do here is I want the number 1 and then the number 2 and then the number 3 to appear after each other to concatenate like pieces of text. I'm not looking to have them add like 1 plus 2 plus 3, right? So remember, instead of using a plus there, I should be using an and. Okay, that was our first step in debugging. We read the message that the computer gave us and we fixed the problem. So now we hit play again and we see what happens. We hit the button. Oh, we have a screen that's filled and filled and filled with text. And I can't quite see what the heck is going on here. It's all over the place. It's just like crazy amount of numbers. I was expecting to see one number on each line. So if, if you're having some trouble differentiating or trying to figure out what's going on on the screen, the best bet of something to do is to use Visual Basic's built-in debugger. So watch carefully while we learn how to do that. Okay, so over here along the left side, just left of this little green strip where we're at right now, you can actually click to produce something that's called a breakpoint. So I'm going to hit right here, and it's going to give me a breakpoint. You'll notice a red circle appears, and then this whole line becomes red. And what I've told the computer is, when we arrive at this spot in the program, Let's stop and take a look around. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. We're going to hit play, and I'm going to hit the button. And now, right in the middle of my program, you can see I've got this flashing down here. And now, in the code, this is highlighted in yellow, and I've got this yellow arrow, which is telling me this is where I am in the program right now. Okay, and so if I look at the form, I actually can't see anything, okay, because in this part of the program, nothing's happened yet. Okay, but as I move along, I can move along in the program slowly. Up here you have my debugging controls. If I hit play, the program will continue as normal until it hits a breakpoint. Okay, but I can also hit this right here, which says step into, which is actually going to move one line at a time. Okay, so if I press this, I'll move right down to the next line. Okay, and now it's paused on this line. This line hasn't run yet. But if, what's really nice is if I hover my mouse over any variable, like textbox1.text, It'll tell me what's in there. Right now, there's nothing in textbox one dot text. Right? There's nothing in there, just two quotes. But if I hold my mouse over I, it'll tell me that I is zero. Okay, again, I can step. And I'll step again. Now the text box one has that zero in it, right? And now I is is one, right? If I hover my mouse over it, I can see as we go. And we can keep stepping through this. And now I'm gonna begin to see the problem. Ah, text box one dot text is zero one. Right, and I'm about to throw a two on it. Okay, so I can hit the step, and I can hit the step a few times, and I can start to see that it's zero, one, two, three, four. The problem is, is, is not that I was getting random crazy numbers on the screen, it was just that they're not getting put on new lines like they're supposed to. Now I can hit play and let the program finish, and I can see everything that's going on right here. Okay, so let me take my break point away. And now I've realized what the problem is. I need something that adds a new line at the end of each, at the end of each uh, time that the text box gets updated. And so for that, I use, if you remember, VB new line. It's our good friend. Now, if I hit play and hit the button, we'll get zero through 250 on each line of the text box like we wanted. Okay, so the whole point of debugging is if there's something going wrong with your code and you want to watch it step through it slowly, all you have to do is click somewhere on this left side, get yourself a breakpoint anywhere where you want to stop, and then you can use this step control to go through one line at a time. And then the really great part about Visual Basic is you can hold your mouse over any of the variables 
and get the information about what their state is at that time in the program. Really powerful stuff. All right, let's try another example. That 251 was too easy. Uh, now what we want to do is find every even number between 0 and 57. And again, output each as its own line in a text box. So we're looking for even numbers between 0 and 57. All right, so again, we're going to go between 0 and 57, right? That seems like it makes sense. But how are we going to find even numbers? Hmm? Well, even numbers are like 0, 2, 4, 6, and so on. And so to make this go up by 2 instead of go up by 1, we can add that step component I discussed earlier and make this guy go up by two. Okay, so now I can, uh, I, can, I can go through this whole thing by hitting play and hit the button and there we go, two, four, six, eight, da, 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 all the way up to 56, but not quite to 57 because we're stepping by two. So when we got to 56 uh, and step two again, we were at 58 and that was too high, so the program stopped. Just to illustrate the point, I'm gonna go ahead and put a breakpoint right here at the text box, one dot text line, and hit play. Okay, and now I'm going to hit the button, and here we go. You see the program has stopped right here on this line, and again I can step by pressing the step button and look at the current state of the text boxes. Right now it has zero, and then if I go again, now it has zero and then two, and now it has zero and two and four. Okay, so you can see it going through its motions. And this can be super helpful when you're lost in the middle of the project and can't figure out what's going wrong. And again, you can use this without loops. You can use it in any context you want. Now, if I hit play in this case, the program's still gonna keep running into this breakpoint, right? Because I've put that breakpoint there and every time I hit play, every time the program arrives at a breakpoint, it's gonna stop. So what I can do is just click here again to get rid of the breakpoint and then hit play to let the program complete. So debugging, a super powerful tool, start using it. All right, that does it for, uh, for loops. That's a great start for four loops. Uh, you're gonna have two assignments here in the very beginning. The first one's called multiplication tables. What you're gonna do is you're gonna give a number to the program and it's gonna tell you uh, all of, the, all of the, the multiplication table for that number from zero to 10. So for example, if you gave it four, it'll say four times zero is zero. Four times one is four four times two is eight, and so on, all the way down to four times 10 is 40. The last one is called check if prime. This is a really interesting assignment. You guys earlier made a function that said that, that was called is divisible. And we're gonna combine that function with our new knowledge of loops to determine if a number is a prime number or not. It's a really interesting uh, mathematical question. Okay, so that's it. We've learned how to use a for loop to repeat sections of code, and I didn't put this in the objectives. This is super important. We also learned how to do a little debugging today. So good luck on the assignments. Make sure your vocab sheet is up to date with the one single uh, vocab word for today, which is for loops. Okay, I didn't write that on there, but I'm gonna I'm gonna po post that up uh, make, uh, auditorily and make sure you have it. So for loop, that's a vocab word for today. Uh, go get started.